Live now to Palu. Bill Neely, NBC News's chief global correspondent, is there for us. Uh, Bill, hopes uh, had briefly flickered yesterday for finding survivors. Uh, have those been extinguished now? Yeah, uh, Bill, I'm at the scene of the recovery of bodies in Palu because this isn't officially a rescue operation anymore because, as you say, the hope of finding anyone alive is now almost extinguished. A French team found signs of life at a collapsed Mercure Hotel last night. They uh, used sniffer dogs and an acoustic sensor and detected a heartbeat, but they had to leave overnight. And when they came back this morning, nothing. That heartbeat had stopped. Uh, the teams are now broadly using heavy machinery, bulldozers knocking down unstable buildings, clearing away rubble, and that obviously is a bad sign for anyone who might be uh, alive underneath. That is the scene at another hotel where two dozen bodies are still buried. We watched this morning as one woman's body was recovered. Her daughter told me she's now lost her mother, her father, and her husband in that rubble, and they were unfortunately there to celebrate their wedding anniversary. Remember, it, almost exactly a week ago, Palu was a perfectly normal city. And at this time, as we speak right now, there was a paragliding competition in full swing. And then the double disaster of the earthquake and tsunami struck. Seven of those paragliders were killed. And we saw this morning a South Korean paraglider cremated. He was an international paragliding champion. And his parents, his brother and his sister were there at the cremation. Just one of many, many tragic scenes here, Bill. Absolutely. And Bill, the, the death toll uh, that we have at the moment doesn't take into account uh, those still missing. Do you think we have any idea yet of the scale of this tragedy? No, I mean, the death toll is now just over 1,500. So it is rising slowly. There are hundreds missing. Uh, aid is also arriving slowly. And indeed, the injured and survivors are being evacuated again slowly. Yesterday, we saw about 100 injured survivors, children, old people, pregnant women, newborn babies loaded onto a military transport plane. But, I mean, thousands more are desperate uh, to get out of here. The Indonesian government, interestingly, says it doesn't want any more foreign help. It doesn't want American transport planes or an American hospital ship. It has told foreign rescue and recovery teams to stand down. It clearly believes it can cope. But people in areas that we haven't got to, very remote areas, are still apparently crying out for help. They say they've been abandoned, ignored. They still want water, food and medicine. So there are still lots of question marks. And most of all, as you say, lots of question marks about the final death toll. But right now, it has topped 1,500.